Hello, everybody. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodman, and over there we have John Lodowski. How are you doing, John? Yeah, hey, pretty good. So, officially out of COVID protocol. How do you feel? Feels good. That's good. Uh, you know, we, we were all worried about you, and, you know, um, thank you for, for being solid for us, and, you know, thank you for putting up with our shenanigans while we do it. <laughs> Mm-hmm. But uh, I, I thank you a lot because, you know, you you toughed it out through this and we kept doing podcasts. On um, a personal note, um, yesterday's video was not released due to personal opinion about the video between the two, me and John and some others mm-hmm. uh, decided that it was not worth releasing. Um, not that it was a bad show, uh, just some info in it was misleading and we don't do that here, so... Right. Um, we're not going to do that here, so we want to give you guys the best show and all truthful stuff. And we were misled um, at the current at that time, and at the current moment, we are still misled. Um, so um, uh, I, I just want to go there. I'm not going to dig into it anymore. I'm going to let the uh, admirals and the Panther Arena divulge and figure that part out themselves. Right. Um, that is not up to us. So by me saying that, you already know what it is. I just didn't say it. <laughs> mm-hmm. So not saying it. If you say it, it'll happen. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. So the Admirals took on the Texas Stars. The Texas Stars are the worst team in the AHL at the current moment going into this game. Well, they were tied mm-hmm. for the worst team in the AHL. Right. Um, this was actually a very entertaining hockey game. Yeah. Um, lots of fun. Lots of, uh, I swear there were like at least three reviews in this game. Right. There was, there was time after the, uh, afterwards, I was wondering if it was going to not be over. It was, it was one of those. Right. All righty. So the Admirals outshot Texas 48 to 38. So apparently yelling, me yelling, Shut the puck! Worked. <laughs> but let's go here. All right. Uh, in the first period, scoring at the 907 mark was Frederick Karlstrom, his fifth of the season, with an assist by um, former Admiral Jeremy Gregoire. And Alex Petrovich, or Petrovich's former uh, Florida Panther, his sixth assist on the season. Welcome back, because all we need is well, Matt Luff scoring his eighth goal of the season with an assist from Rocco Grimaldi, his 10th, and Cody Glass is 18th. And Rocco Grimaldi, right after that, scores his 14th with Matt Luff. And that's his 10th of the season uh, with an, another assist from Mark Del Guizzo, his fourth. Then what's Luff got to do with it? His ninth of the season with an assist from Rocco Grimaldi and Dylan Glugis. His fourth, Grimaldi's 11th. Then in the third, Texas tries the claw back. Um, with Joel LaSprance, his ninth with an assist from Curtis McKenzie, his 11th former Chicago Wolf. And Ben Gleason, his 13th, that was on the power play. Then we had Nicholas Camino, his fifth of the season, with an assist from Joseph Ciccioni and Oscar Back. Uh, Ciccioni's fifth and Back's ninth. Then we get to OT. OT was entertaining. Yeah. There was a lot of pressure by the Admirals in that OT. There was. And they were trying to get love that hat trick. So yeah, they really were. I I um so scoring at OT was Cole, your captain, my captain, Cole Schneider, his 14th of the season with an assist from Matt Luff, his 11th, and Rocco Grimaldi, his 12th on the power play. Nicholas Camino was uh hit at the 150. Mark, so a minute into the power play, minute four seconds into the power play, they answer and end it. 
So much credit goes to this team. They kept battling. They didn't want to get to them. This game could have been four. There was a goal scored by Texas that was called back for a high stick. There was a wraparound attempt that looked like a goal, but it wasn't. Right. Uh, I mean, there was a lot in this game to be entertained, but I think that this team stuck it through, played well for, for Angie, and, and Luffer had a good game, and, and Grimm's had a good game, and, you know, um, you know, I'm, I'm not going to argue with this as long as we get these kinds of results. Don't lose in regulation. That is the rule. I am. If you lose in regulation, lose by at least one. I don't count ENs on that part. If you're like lose two nothing and the EN is scored to make it two nothing, you lost one nothing and they got an empty net goal. Right. Nice for them. Like really, you can't blame the team for that. You can't blame anybody. But in net, um, for the Texas Stars was Matt Jurassic, Jurassic. Uh, his 44 saves on 48 shots. He had a really good game. I give him credit. Right. Ingram stopped 35 of 38, just as good of a game. You know, one goal was the difference. Right. Um, head coach for the Texas Stars is Neil Graham. <laughs> assistant coach Maxim Fortunis former captain of that said Texas squad last season and Travis Morin assistant captain and captain of the Texas Stars also at one point so um, also uh, uh, here's where it gets a little funny right, hear this one out Okay. The also a former assistant coach to the uh, Texas Stars head coach of the Admirals is Carl Taylor. A former player to the Texas Stars is Greg Rollo. So there's a big right. connection in this between the two teams. Uh, right. Carl Taylor was an assistant coach over there in Texas um, when they had their cup run. And we picked him up the next year. Um, Greg Rollo came with him. Uh, he was a player at the time. Right. Scott Ford is our assistant coach. He's been here for over a decade. Attendance at the Panther Arena was not too great tonight, but I'm wondering if certain news that eh, affected that. 2,418 fans. Um, the Admirals played a great game. Um, referees were Peter Tarnish and Christopher Waterstrad. Um, linesman was Thomas Lyle and Andrew Bell. Uh, Chris Waterstrad has the most, um, you know, Magnum PI. Yeah. He has the Magnum PI stash. Ah. And we were all joking about it over at our, our little chant section we have in, uh, the, uh, Panther arena for the Admirals. Um, we were all laughing and, and chuckling. But up next for us is the uh, is tomorrow. Uh, the Preds take on the Winnipeg Jets. Uh, this game, um, it's going to have a huge bearing on how things go. Um, one thing I want to, a couple things I want to focus on on this one. All right, the Preds are fourth in power play. Yeah. The, the Jets are 31st in penalty kills. So if they end up in the box, our chances go a little higher because their penalty kill is almost last in the league. Yeah. Um, they are almost averaging three goals against <clears throat> a game, um, but they're also almost averaging three goals for a game. Yeah. Um, they're around 500 on the, pen, uh, on the faceoff. Um, in the last five games, uh, points leader Kyle Connor, uh, as well as him having three goals, uh, Mark Shifley has five assists for the Jets, and plus minus leader is Neil Pionk. Um, for the Preds, points getter is Roman Yossi, goals is Matt Duchesne with three, and assists is five with Roman Yossi. So we're pretty much dead even here. Goaltending, right. you have uh, UC Saros 20. 
11 in two record with a 2.43 goals against average and a 0.923 save percentage and two shutouts. Um, and that for uh, these are your average starters. So Connor Hallibuck stopping, uh, he has a 14, 10, and 5 record with a 2.78 goals against average with a 0.915 save percentage and two shutouts. Um, the backups uh, are David Riddich with a 3-2-1 record with a 3.05 goals against average with a, a 0.882 save percentage. Markel Berdine is the backup in Winnipeg. He has yet to play. Um, uh, in other news... Um, oh, um, the a NHL has rescheduled all of the uh, um, games for uh, that were postponed or um, updated. So uh, we're we're gonna just talk about um. Uh, the uh, Preds here a little bit on and, and, and what they have as, as a part of that, you know, and what they're going to have to go through to kind of right. um, get that. And me and John have to go and manually add these to our schedule. Right. Um, so they will now be playing um, Dallas on Wednesday, February 9th, Winnipeg on uh, February 12th, Washington um, will be played on February 15th. That game was originally scheduled for April 2nd. It will now be played on February 15th. So there goes that for me. Um, Char uh, Nashville at Charlotte. Um, they were supposed to play December 19th. Will now be played February 18th. Um, Nashville at Florida will be played. Was supposed to be played on the 23rd. Will now be played on February 22nd. Um, Nashville at Ottawa on November 18th will now be played April 7th and Calgary uh, Nashville or Calgary at Nashville will now be played April 19th. So, all righty, there is your complete schedule. A link will be posted in this video um, with the update, um, that will be posted at some point within the next 24 hours from now. Yeah. Thank you all for watching. Um, this has been from Milwaukee to Nashville brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker. See you all soon. Me and John are completely tanked. Good night, everyone. <laughs> night.